It is cold today. So I've just been asked by Rhea if I could make a simple necklace stand for her mum for Christmas. This is a complete spur of the moment project and I've got about three, three and a half hours to spare. So I'm gonna see if I can make something. I don't have a lathe so I can't turn anything spherical, but I do have plenty of pieces of dowel kicking around. Oh. I've also got these snooker cue off cuts. I think I could use those because then I could get a tapered look going on which might be quite nice. So I've pulled out the snooker cue off cuts from when I made the snooker cue legged table. This wood I believe is ash and I've pulled out this dowel which looks like it's 12 millimeter. This is hardwood, I'm not sure what type of wood but I'm thinking I could use this as an upright and this as the kind of cross piece. First I'll just measure up this dowel and that's 12.68 millimeters. I'm gonna lock my calipers there and then I can find the area on the snooker cue that matches that dimension, which is here. And I'll make a pencil mark. And that's going to be where I want the dowel to join the top of the snooker cue. So here's my pencil mark and I want to cut kind of like a half circular joint, something like that shape to accommodate the dowel. I applied some hot glue to a piece of scrap chipboard and then I could stick the workpiece on, but in order to account for the taper of the cue, I did this at a very slight angle so that there was a small gap on one side and no gap at the other end. And that's because I want to drill through this at a 90 degree angle or as close to that as possible. Then at the pillar drill, I tried to line up the tip of a 12 millimeter brad point bit to the center of the cue and use that to cut the joint. So that was a fail, it looks like I didn't have the drill bit centered to the workpiece because I've got a little bit of material left on this side and no material on that side. But fortunately I have some more snooker cues so I'll try that again. Oh dear, same problem again and this is trickier than I thought. Okay, third time lucky. Okay, that one is pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do better than that, so this one will do. I removed the rejects and then I could cut away the waste on the best one using my Japanese pull saw. That's a pretty good fit. I think I can make that work. Next, I removed all the finish from the snooker cues using my card scraper, which takes very fine shavings to expose the bare wood. And then I followed that up with a bit of sanding at 100 grit. Here I'm trying to decide how long to make the upright piece and I decided that about 300 millimeters would be a good size, but I was conscious that I would need to match the diameter of the bottom of the workpiece to the size of my drill bits. So I measured with my calipers and found an area close to that pencil mark that measured 18 millimeters. And that's where I decided to cut it because I knew I had an 18 millimeter drill bit. Next I went looking through my small offcuts bin to find something to use for the base and I found a nice piece of sapili. I think this was the offcut from when I made the new jaws for my vice recently. I used a compass to mark up a circle as big as I could possibly get out of this workpiece and then I cut that out of the bandsaw making sure to cut on the outside of the line. I decided I'd add a taper to the base to add a little more visual interest, so I tilted the table of my disc sander, and then I could shape that taper by sanding up to the line. And that turned out pretty nice. Rather than use an 18 mm bit, I started with a 16 mm auger bit to drill out the center hole to try and match what would be the narrower end of the taper. And then I used a tapered step cutter bit to ream out the other side to 18 millimeters. Then I did a test fit and I knew it wasn't going to fit. And that's a good thing at this point, but I wanted to see how close it was. I could then refine the taper using a round file. I kept doing test fits and then removed a bit more material until it pushed in almost to the very end. Here I'm adding some masking tape just to protect the base from the adhesive that I'll be adding. And I can cut the hole with a knife. 
and then I mixed up some two-part epoxy, which I chose to use partly because of its quick curing time, it sets at about five minutes, and partly because it's a good gap filling adhesive, so if the joint isn't perfect, it'll still bond really well. After adding the upright piece, I then used a small square just to check that the upright was sitting plumb. But again, because it's tapered, I'm just kind of eyeballing that the gap at the top is consistent all the way around, and I made adjustments as necessary. While waiting for that to cure, I could work more on the top cross piece. First, I added a taper to the ends to match the taper used on the base at the disc sander. I thought that would just be a bit more interesting than having the ends at 90 degrees and I cleaned that up with some hand sanding. I also decided to apply a stain to try and match the colour of the Sapili base, and I just applied that with a cotton cloth. By that point the epoxy had cured and I could sand the bottom of the base flush at the belt sander. And I did a bit of hand sanding to ease over the sharp edges on the base. Then I marked up a centre point on the top piece and I added some more epoxy to secure that in place, lining up the pencil mark to the centre as closely as possible. And again I used my small square here just to check that it was sitting level, again having to account for that taper. Once that was cured I applied finish to the whole thing and I'm using hard wax oil here applying as thin a coat as possible as per the instructions on the tin. I really love the way that Sapili looks with an oil finish, I just can't get enough of it. So that was about all I got done on that particular day and after giving this project some thought I felt it needed a little something extra so I bought some of this 4mm brass dowel. I used this firstly to reinforce the joint at the top because I was a bit worried it might not be strong enough. I first drilled a small pilot hole through the top being careful to hold the drill bit as plumb as I could and then I drilled it out to 4mm to accommodate the dowel. I cut some of the brass to length using a hacksaw and that cut left some burrs so I filed those away and tapered the end slightly to make it easier to insert into the hole. And at the other end I filed it flat first to polish it up a bit and to polish it even more to get it super shiny I used 240 400 and then finally 600 grit wet and dry paper. And then to take it to the next level of shininess I used my leather strop loaded with some polishing compound and then it was really reflective and it looked good. I added some epoxy and then I could carefully hit it in with my mallet until it was flush with the top. You can see here that I did get a bit of chip out from where I drilled the hole, so later on I touched that up with some careful sanding, stain and finish. I also used the brass dowel as stop pins at each end of the top piece to stop the necklaces from sliding off, and these holes would have been much easier to drill before the project was assembled, but this is just the way things go when you make a project with very little planning. This time I chucked up the dowels into my drill, and I used that to polish up the brass really quickly which worked great. And for the pins I used a drop of super glue into the hole to hold them in place. And then I could fully seat them using the vise. And I really like the way that the brass looks against the dark wood. So that's it finished and it probably took about 4 or 5 hours in total. And it was made entirely from scraps of wood that I already had. I hope you enjoyed the project. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you want to, you can also support the channel on Patreon where you can receive early access to my videos, some exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching and a happy Christmas to everyone.